so uh live from the barber chair barbershop talk i wanted to let y'all know that the barbershop is a real big important part to uh, uh getting your career off off the ground and running see where you work into when you work in a barbershop and it's a storefront and it's in it's in the community and uh people are accustomed to going to the barbershop that's how you generate your clientele So, like I'm trying to say to you, uh, the barbershop is breeding a lot of celebrity barbers. The barbershop is what is what breeds celebrity barbers. Because when you're a new barber, you need to go into a barbershop that's already established and running, that has walk-ins, that's pumping you walk-ins, because you want your experience. You have a when you come out of barber school, you have a year of apprentice uh, apprenticeship that you need to do. And so in that year's time, I suggest that you spend that in your local barbershop. The local barbershops sh should be full of apprentice students every year. Every year, there should be guys coming into the barbershop and maybe even guys leaving, okay? The barbershop is your, is your, your grounds to come up. The barbershop serves as a place for barbers to get their careers off the ground and running. And you transition that, you trans, you change that into something else, something that you want to do. What's your mark? What's your sting on the community, on society? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not geared to own a barbershop. There are a lot of guys who go into salon suites because they are travel barbers. They might have to cut... Um, LeBron James hair, they have this and the third going on, you know, they're cool and locked in with the local hockey team and soccer team and stuff like that. So they're moving around in these different hotels and flying from this coast to that coast to cut some hair. So they got a salon suite so that when they are in their local town or whatever, they can still service the people that was close to them and that depend on them. The salon suite barbers also are, are barbers who, like I said, transitioned into maybe offering different services. Okay, so now, so uh, if I was to ever do a salon suite again, it would be um, totally centered around me and I would gear it towards maybe something similar to a private, pra private practice to where I'm doing different stuff. You know more personal and more intimate services with my clients to where other people won't be there okay this sir this client is scheduling a 2 30 appointment to three o'clock 2 30 to 3 30 appointment and it paid me 200 dollars because in this appointment <clears throat> so the barbershop is a perfect place to get your career off and running okay uh, whatever you whatever you want to do, whatever you want to transition into, start at the barbershop. Go to your local barbershop when you're done with school, get your career off and running. Okay, you got to understand that the barbershop owner has more, more expensive bills than you. So you got to think about it. It costs, the overhead of cost, the cost to run a barbershop compared to what that barbershop owner is actually generating as far as booth rent or commission compared to what you're paying for your chair and at a price point it becomes effortless to where you're living comfortable with all your bills is paid you work at a barbershop there's nothing wrong with that okay so uh, owning a barbershop is not for everybody I, I definitely say your first step is to always go into a local barbershop or something like that um, because like I said in a few ways, it it creates you, it helps you to become not not only a business owner yourself, but it'll help you be, understand how the business is really ran. It'll help you get a general idea of, you know, hey, most shops are a certain way. And even if you shop hop for a little while, like in the beginning of your career, I don't even think it's bad. You know, no, you know what I'm saying? Because that'll help you get to see the diversity in different shops. Um, I've worked in different shops in my career and they all had little things that were different that, you know, uh, that 
you can implement into your own thing once you get your own thing running, okay? And so, go to a barbershop first. It's going to groom you and polish you into a good barber because you're going to cut everybody walking. You know what I'm saying? When you're the new barber, you're pretty much going to get the walk-ins. So with the walk-ins, it tests your skill because now you're doing a lot of different stuff. So once you got a set clientele base and you know these said amount of people are going to book you all the time, then you get used to and conditioned to just the services that they ask for. But when you knew and you're a walk-in barber, this is a perfect time in your career because you're gonna have so many different types of hairstyles come through the door and you'll be the you'll be the one to service them and you're gaining the knowledge you're gaining the wisdom the understanding the time behind the chair that is uh grooming you into being able to cut perform withstand last you know it's that that is building you into being a steadfast barber who can stand in the trenches when things get busy and difficult haircuts come in. You can be called on and you can perform and you can execute, you know, and you can get paid for said performance, okay? So I always say the barbershop is a wonderful thing to do. Don't ever feel like in your career that you've messed up if you've ever had to, you know, fall back on a barbershop uh, experience because you should be thankful that your barber license can get you in any door uh, as far as barbering and barbershop is concerned. No matter if you're doing your own thing or you decide to go into somebody's barbershop, you have a barber license, you can still keep it rolling, baby. Keep it rolling, keep making a dollar. That's how I say it. Keep it rolling, keep making a dollar, okay? Um... <clears throat> With that, the barbershop also is, so the barbershop is pretty much a big grooming ground. It's a grooming ground for you. Learn how to save your money, understand what the career entails, how do you get paid, when do you kick out, when, what, what kind of holidays come around, what's busy season, what's not busy season, what's busy season, what's not busy season. Uh, you know, everything that you need to learn about the career, you're pretty much gonna learn it first, being a barber in a barber shop. It's the best experience of your life. You get to see how other barbers who may have been doing it longer than you uh, perform, the services they offer, the extra things that they do, so that that can help you groom into a better barber yourself. It's not being, being new, in the barber industry and going into a local barber shop is not a, is not the it's not something you want to skip okay uh i thought so as well like i heard you know i i went to barber school and you know barbers uh these guys were coming out of barber school and going right into owning their own barber shop because they were financially able to do so uh you know there are situations and stories and scenarios like that Everybody thinks they know how to cut coming out of barber school. Everybody thinks they know the industry. Sadly, that's just not true, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that you really have to experience. Everybody, even people who don't have nothing to do with haircutting and barbering, think that they know about haircutting and barbering or hairstyling in the industry. You have no idea. You have no idea. People will, people will literally try to tell you about your career and what you should be doing or shouldn't be doing when they have no idea about the career at all. And you have no idea if you're new, okay? If you're new to barbering, it's not, um, I, I'm saying this because I just went through an experience with, with seeing a new barber do this for the first time and me being a seasoned barber who, who has done this a few times, uh, the difference 
and the understanding of how this works and why this is working for me and why this isn't working for you. Uh, there's there's a, a misunderstanding as to really what this uh, career is, what this job is, what this job entails, okay? So, barbershop, thank God there's a barbershop. If you ever fell down on a knee as a barber, you can always go to, to some work at somebody's barbershop. Thank God there's a barbershop. Thank God that you have a barber license. Like, you'll never, you pretty much never be uh, unemployed, period. Never be unemployed. There's a barbershop everywhere. Just get to a barbershop that's a good one, good fit for you, and make that work for you and transition into the other stuff that you want to transition into. Along your transitioning process, everything might not be a win. You can, this is called life. You can't expect every move you make to be a win. It's just not going to work like that. So, thank God you have a barber license because when you don't win, you don't lose. Period. <laughs> when you don't win, you don't lose. So, when you're new, just thank God that you, and you're not making the money. When you're new and you're not making the money that you want to make, or you, it seems like the barbershop isn't giving you what you want from it, get your skills right. Thank God you're in a position that you're in. And if you're a barber who's been doing it for some time and you feel that way, raise your prices. Raise your prices. Yeah, so let's go with the next video. I just wanted to show y'all a couple things. You know, when you're a barber, you have to have a few things, right? So I'm gonna show you a few things that I do, how I like it, all right? Uh, find your, every barber has like their own little unique style, you know, unique little things you do. My, my thing is to whatever hurdles that you get to, be able to overcome those hurdles, okay? Whatever, anything that comes your way, being a barber, have a system or have something set up to where it's going to get you around it, okay? See, when I'm spraying on that cool player uh, and using it for the razor, now I don't really have to worry about uh, nicking the client and different stuff like that. So whatever type of hurdle you might run into, have something in play that's your go-to so that you can get around that hurdle, okay? If, if it's a certain way you cut, and there's a certain way you, you, uh, that you do things and you find yourself getting into a hurdle, find a way that gets you out of that hurdle, okay? For example, a lot of people get to a point where they're fading really good and they still leave a line or two in their fades. The hurdle that I had to learn to get over was to implement into not just using the guards, but clipper over comb action. See now, once you start, once you add that clipper over comb action to you doing your fade with the guards, now you'll see a more blended and a, a more defined fade on your haircuts. So that's little stuff. So when any type of hurdle you get to, find a find something that's going to get you out of that hurdle. And that's the point. That's the purpose of when you're a new barber going to work at a barbershop that's already established in your community first because you're gonna learn a lot of those lessons from the other barbers and the older barbers who's been doing it from a while, for a while, while you're getting your apprenticeship. And once you get your apprenticeship, then you can go on to uh, do bigger and better things. But I always suggest while you're going through your apprenticeship, it's just a year. I know here in North Carolina, it's just a year. Go to a local shop, cut in that shop. Don't worry about the money, worry about the the, the experience, learn, worry about the education, worry about what you're learning, worry about how you're observing this business is being ran, this industry is being ran. Observe and learn, sit, watch, wait, and participate, okay? 
and it's going to make you a, a well-groomed, well-seasoned barber, okay? One thing about me is I never claim to be the nicest barber, but I'm going to be able to cut anything that walks through the door, okay? But that's my thing. It's customer service, all right? You're going to leave with a full haircut that's functional, okay? I don't, I'm not claiming to be the Van Gogh of, of haircutting or, the, or nothing. I'm just saying that you come through this door, you're going to leave satisfied, period. That's all, I, that's all I, I stand to be in my career, and I'm fine with that, okay? Good customer service is where I'm at, okay? So on my barber station, I always keep two bottles, boom. One has aftershave in it. This is my main aftershave that I use daily. Uh, psh, psh, I can hit it. I can spray a neck strip. Keep a aftershave. All right? I keep a whole bottle in here. Just so I don't have to play around with opening tops or nothing. I just go straight to it. Psh, psh. All right? And then I keep the other one. This is water. Right? Just want to be able to grab the water. Psh, 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 psh. Spray it on the hair. Do what you need to do. All right? Don't got time to be going fire and water. None of that. None of that. All right. Uh, so I also keep a little bottle of hair tonic, okay? Tonic. Uh, the best way to explain it, it's almost like a hair water, not a hair oil or uh, water as at all. It has like a it has like a, a property to it to where it gives the hair um, a slick base, something that just regular water won't do. And I say it that way because they also make a hair tonic with oil in it. And my definition of hair tonic is already like an oil water. And that's why the hair tonic with the oil in it, you can see the oil floating at the top. So with that one, I usually keep like a bottle. Excuse the name. I know it's saying Nairobi, but Nairobi doesn't make this product. I like the Nairobi, um, the cool player bottles. So I use that for this as well. Uh, and so psh, psh, spray it on the hair good for moving the straight hair and doing what you need to do also it's good to give a it's good as a conditioning property uh, for like uh, kinky and curly hair as well you know uh, so usually I'll have two of them one with just a regular tonic like this and another bottle with the tonic with the oil in it because you never know what you might need to do, you take it, you shake it up, boom, the oil mixes with the tonic, you spray it on, and keep going. This one, I don't have to mix it, I, I don't have to shake it, I just spray it, keep going, right? And then I do keep a, I, I need another one, but I do keep a, a regular cool player uh, bottle with cool player in it, and uh, I actually keep a gallon and I just refill it. But this is a cool player, uh, see, this bottle just happens to be low because I use it all the time. Cool Player is uh, it's an anti-bump spray, and it has a very uh, soft and and uh, very professional mint smell to it. So the, what I like to do is anytime I go at the face with the razor, if I'm shaping up the line or, or just even with the trimmers, I'm going to clean, clean up just the bottom of the neck or something like that. I like to go at it with the Cool Player. Psh, psh, then put the line on there because I know it's anti-bump for sure. So um, it does have that little bit of stain, that little bit of burn uh, from the alcohol, which is keeping the skin clean. You know, it's keeping the skin clean while I go at it with my razor. And it gives me a nice moist um, canvas to work with while I'm using my razor so it can slide better and I don't nick the customer, the client, okay? Oh. Keep you some of this. This is that wrap it up foam from Nairobi. Uh, I like this because you can take this and put it on the waves. Somebody with waves, short waves, and brush that down, and it'll actually hold. See, this is a holding foam, right? Even for like patting it on after you use maybe the sponge. Even for like patting it on after you use maybe the sponge, you can pat that on and keep the curls intact, okay? So there's a lot of little things that you can use in the barber business, in the barber world, in this barber game that might can benefit you about alcohol, okay? What's appropriate, what's not appropriate, all right? Now, when you're working in a barber shop, 
there's going to be a lot of different people coming through the barbershop. You can't just have one aftershave that services everybody, okay? Um, that will that itself will have people leave, say, oh, I got a good cut, but I'm not coming back because I'm a woman and now he made me smell like a man, all right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I smell like Old Spice walking down the street. I'm a female. So what I do is I keep a few different types of alcohol, okay? Now, my number one is my main alcohol. The main alcohol usually consists of something that I can get in a gallon size, okay? It's important to learn how to save money, and one of the ways you save money is buying things in bulk. So if you could buy your aftershave in a gallon size, that way you can uh, pinch off, pinch off from the gallon, from the gallon, use it accordingly, you won't run out as much, all right? You buy a small bottle of aftershave, it's not going to last long, okay? So you need a gallon to not have to keep overspending, overspending, overspending for small bottles of aftershave, okay? So I always have my number one aftershave, find something that works, okay? Um, usually I like a light smell, so when you go into those old, older um, beauty supply stores and they'll have those gallons of lusters aftershave sitting at the bottom of the shelf, pick those up, you know, pick those up because uh, those are going to, you know, uh, help you in a long way because they're great smells and they're going to do the job, you know, so pick those up, you know. All the beauty supply stores have them. They have these gallons of these cool mist and stuff at the bottom of the shelf just sitting there. Buy them because what's going to happen is it's going to save you in the long run. I don't care if it's cool mist or what it is. Buy it. Also, uh, so for females, right? So a lot of times women are come in. And so for women, uh, what I do is I keep just a regular alcohol. And I keep a, I keep a wintergreen alcohol. You see, this is lower <laughs> than the regular alcohol uh, because I do a lot of kids. So the kids, I'm not going to give them a grown man scented smell aftershave. I'm probably going to use the wintergreen after um, alcohol because it does have a scent to it and it's very light and it is alcohol. Okay, for women, I'm not going to give her the wintergreen or nothing. I'm just going to give her the regular 50% uh, to 70% alcohol because she's a woman. You know, I don't want to pull off her makeup and I don't want to pull off her her um, perfume and stuff like that. So everybody's comfortable with just a regular alcohol smell. And that's the way I like to prefer to keep it. Okay. So just a few things about alcohol in the barbershop that I wanted to share with y'all today. Peace. So this has been another episode of Live from the Barber Chair Barbershop Talk. It's your boy. Thank y'all for talking with me today. Uh, I'm excited about the future of the barber industry. Uh, I'm hoping that you all are going to stick around with me. Uh, let's see where this thing goes. All right. Some new things coming out. Uh, new products being launched. Uh, new heights being taken. So just continue with me and we're going to ride this roller coaster. All right. All right, I'll holla at y'all. Peace.